grocery department chain, right? We, we have department stores, and we've been in business since 1907, so it was our 110th uh, year anniversary last year. Uh, so we've been around the block a while, but you know we weren't really known for technology. That was not, you know, that was not why you came to New Marcus. You came to the show. That's where I was last week, uh, and and really, you know, it's become kind of travel the globe uh, to go see what's happening and you know see what uh, uh, what the trends are uh, and to look for you know kind of new emerging technologies that might have an application in retail. So I, I get to do some of that. That's not a bad gig, by the way. Uh, you know, I rely on my Neiman Marcus associates, and uh, uh, we've had various the SOFs and for Store of the Future. We, we've had various forms of committees, uh, you know, different folks from around the business that'll come together and ideate uh, and pass along, you know, uh, you know, kind of ideas for projects. The last for our senior executives to go drop ideas now for vetting. You know, when they go out around the world and meet people and learn things, uh, you know, they, they get past a lot of ideas that they're not sure what to do with or the, if there's something worth pursuing. And now the lab can take those ideas and go research it for them and report back as to, you know, what we think, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, about the idea and, and whether it's applicable uh, to Neiman Marcus. Our capacity to, you know, vet every single one of them, to be honest. It's a, it's, it's a tidal wave, it's, it's overwhelming. Uh, and so we just weren't in the right place anymore. Uh, and it was time to move our store uh, as the demographics uh, for Worth and Change. And so uh, we moved into a, a new um, Simon property. And Simon's a big developer of uh, properties that I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, we moved into this new Simon property called the Shops at Clear Fork. Uh, and uh, that, that goes from none to some now, right? Uh, when we uh, uh, we'll talk about what we did. So we partnered with a company called Alert Tech, uh, and we added smart call buttons to the fitting room, and if you press that service button when you're in the fitting room, uh, every associate in that department's iPhone, and we, we provide iPhones to all. At Neiman Marcus, associates care about service and building a continued relationship with our customers. Once I see Sarah on the floor, I can approach her and find out more about what she's looking for today. We can start a room, and she can continue to look around for a few more things while I get the room ready. With iSell, I can check the looks I shared with Sarah previously, confirm if she's here for a trunk show or a trend event, and see my communication history with her. Once Sarah's ready to head back to the fitting room, I can meet her on the floor and we can head back when her clothes are ready. But what happens when I'm not in the fitting rooms to help Sarah? Wrong size, different color, different fit. It happens. I'm doing what I do best, making Sarah's experience in the fitting room better, finding the right items to complete her look, plus a couple extra upsells and cross sells that are on point. Only to find out that I gathered handfuls of items that don't work. Now she's frustrated as I find out the problem and start over. She may even leave. What if Sarah could tell me when she needs assistance, whether I'm near the fitting room or on the floor? With Alert Tech in our fitting rooms, she can. They build technology that augments my intuition in the fitting room to make me more successful. With Room Ballet on iCell, I can start a fitting room immediately. Using Sarah's name, I can reserve a room remotely. And if there's a wait, she can get a text message when her room is ready. Now, when Sarah heads to the fitting rooms, I can easily distinguish open from occupied rooms just by looking at the colors outside each room. And I can find the room I reserved for Sarah just by looking for a reserve light or checking iCell. Now that we're in the fitting room, I can introduce the call button to Sarah, where she can press if she needs a new style, a new fit, or if she needs a second opinion. Now that she's in the room, I can link her visit to my ISO, so when she has a question, I can be alerted directly. This is a tool that allows me to give Sarah the best possible customer experience. I can keep the tempo up in the fitting room. I can grab a few more things to complete. The fashion mirror, and with the fashion mirror, you stand in front of it, and you say, record my try on. Uh, and you do a quick turn around, and then you can play that back, and you can see with your own two eyes how you look in that outfit. You don't have to rely on your friends to tell you it looks great. Uh, choose the playlist. Uh, and it's done in a very, uh, uh, Nice way in that you know not one customer, you know, one customer can't come in and sort of take over all the music in the store. It's very democratic uh, in how it uh, uh, you know chooses who's next on the playlist. Uh, Fort Worth was a reception when we opened it. 
Uh, doesn't sound all that exciting. Hey, we've got a uh, automated. Well, to get a good charge, you're going to need to leave it in there about 30 minutes. You know, you know, let's say you're at 10 percent. 30 minutes is probably. Yeah, it becomes so important. So, you know, this is a real service that solves a real problem for our customers. So, I said that we had spent, uh, you know, quite a bit. Uh, or I was shifting my focus. What I heard is our e-commerce revenue was about 33 percent of our total revenue, which is a pretty significant chunk. Uh, and I, you know, I don't think to be, uh, you know, spending time thinking about that as well. So one of the successes we've had on the digital side, one of the contributions we made, is we partnered with a company called uh, Powerfront uh, to change the way our live chat agents interact with customers. You know, and if you think about a live chat experience on a website, the way our legacy system worked was you would say, "I need help," and the chat agent would come on and say, "What do you need?" Help? So, Lou Marcus is a 110-year-old uh, retailer founded here in Dallas, Texas in 1907. Made themselves really a uh, name for themselves International Last Call, our off-price brand. We have a robust online presence with the name of Marcus.com, LastCall.com, Us.com, Borchow.com, and MyTeresa.com. Some of the chat tools that I've used in shopping for, what they're looking at, what their history is, uh, and that now goes away for us with uh, using PowerFront. I can raise the expectations for the associates because they do have a view of what's in that customer's cart. So instead of having to ask the customer questions, we're, we're well equipped uh, to be able to just kind of ease them right into that customer experience and make them feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're there with them. For our associates with avatars. Uh, and so a, a live chat agent sees an avatar uh, uh, of customers that are shopping online. That avatar sh uh, is standing in the area that that customer is actually shopping, whether that's shoes or beauty or uh, apparel or whatever. Uh, the color of the avatar tells uh, information about is it a new customer, is it an angry customer, is it a, you know, all sorts of emotional context to the sales associate. And if they click on the avatar, they immediately are drilled down onto the history of that customer's interactions, all the previous chats that customer may have had with the uh, with Nima Marcus, uh, you know, all that contextual information uh, that I need to deliver a great customer service experience uh, to the uh, uh, to the customer. So uh, it's a game changer. It makes uh, you know the, that live chat interaction uh, on the web much more like a one to one in a store uh, interaction, and it turns. Uh, buzzwords uh, that you've probably heard a lot of, uh, especially uh, at NRF. Uh, we actually have, uh, are about to launch our Alexa skill uh, in just a few weeks, uh, and we'll do customer service types of things with Alexa so that you can th do things like say, uh, you know, ask him and Marcus, where's my order? Uh, ask him and Marcus to reorder. Great success uh, with that format, and uh, you know, this really speaks to the millennial and, and the younger customers that, you know, we're all trying to, you know, uh, to reach. Uh, you know, as our next generation uh, uh, of customers. So great luck with that. And then I'll end up very quickly with, uh, we did a pop-up shop here in Soho. Big deal, we partnered with MasterCard and with Marie Claire Magazine and a bunch of other partners. Uh, in about six weeks time, we, we put it together, we delivered the product, uh, multiple, uh, there's some shots of the, of the store. It was open for about three weeks. Uh, the idea was to go learn about new technologies and new ways of selling and take those learnings and apply them, uh, you know, into our businesses. Uh, here's our list of partners and you can see, you know, all sorts of guys had to come together, right, to, to pull this off. Uh, if you Google Marie Claire Next Big Thing, you can read all about it uh, and uh, uh, hopefully you get excited about it as, as we did. So with that, I'm going to end up uh, with my usual tagline and, you know, I talked about some of the... Uh, 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 things where I get my input from were like the Store of the Future Committee, and we used to talk about Store of the Future a lot, uh, and even Marcus, and, and then one day it just came to me that we're not thinking about it right. Uh, it's not about the Store of the Future, it's about the customer of the future. Um, think about that, keep that front and center. If you're trying to solve the problems for your customer of your future, you're going in the right direction and you're going to be successful. So that, I'll end up there.